of the day. Then, so um, if you're, you know, going on that path towards non-attachment, that extends to the people you love as well. You know, so if you're, if you have children, um, parents, uh, all of your family. Um, so it's a different kind of love, I suppose, one that sees um, life in sort of a broad spectrum of equality. So um, I don't think I've reached that point, um, but I think it's a worthy thing to sort of think about and perhaps strive for. Yeah. John, did you want to follow up? Yeah, I would have a follow up. Um, this is going to sound a little bit more I'm used to the question. But I am curious, where does the responsibility lie on the non does that Does that fall on the individual that's thinking about it? Um, and if so, how does, how does that person avoid conflict while still trying to impress upon others this, this idea? So how do you, how do you be nonviolent by enforcing nonviolence? Um, I don't know if anybody, I don't think anybody here was in the paper, um, the equal ability session yesterday, but Joe gave a really amazing paper, um, and I think I can talk about this a little bit on, um, here we go, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> uh, what do call it? Queer animal politics, and the process of queer animal politics, and I think, um, it speaks to this, you know, process of clear something, um, to me, is most powerful in the present moment. So, um, again, we can do, we can do thought experiments and be like, you know, am I going to, to kill one child versus saving 100 people, and what does that look like? Um, I don't even necessarily think that that's a useful uh, way of looking at these problems. For me, um, what I've learned from my yoga practice is to try and negotiate with stuff in the moment as it comes up. So sometimes this is more difficult when you're talking about actual um, wars, like the, the war in Syria right now is a really complicated situation. And what, what do we do with that when you know the government there is um, using chemical warfare on civilians? Um, how, how does this, this fit together? I'm not entirely sure. It's, it's a really complicated thing. And when it becomes to that scale, um, the individual face-to-face -face no longer has the power that it does necessarily when I'm talking to you. Like, I can't go to Syria and speak to um, political leaders there and just be with them, even if it's just to be with them, you know? That's not a reality that I can um, make happen. So, just to, to answer your question, I think it's a too difficult question to answer on a nationalistic kind of level. Um, Again, it comes from me back to my the personal choices that I made, and that's ultimately where I feel I can be the most powerful. So my nonviolence will extend, hope radiate radiate out from there. I hope um, and I believe that it does. Just like you know, if I'm kind to somebody, perhaps we've all experienced this. When you get on a bus and a bus driver is like, "Hey, how's your day going? You know, how you doing today? And where are you going? Are you you know enjoying the sunshine? It's like a revelation." You know, and then you get those bus drivers that are basically like, screw you, I hate my life. And no, I'm not going to let you on the bus even though you don't have bus fare. Um, although a person might appear to be in a position of desperation. So those little interactions, I think, for me, are where I'm the most powerful. And that's where I emphasize, where I put my activism primarily and my nonviolence. Other questions? Well, we, had, we had only two people on the panel, so we have extra time. It's kind of up to you how we how you would like to use it. Do you want to expand on the ideas that you <laughs> <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to eat your cookie? <laughs> I mean, I think it's kind of this is kind of random, but I think it's kind of interesting that between Jeff, did you hear Jeff's paper? Um, I'm not sure. Um, you know, when to kill an animal. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. there's that it's really interesting, you know, <laughs> philosophical. Is it philosophy to talk about violence? I think it's interesting that we're even talking to in the industry, we're talking about death and love. 
That's where, I mean, for me, that's where all my work always comes up, is thinking about that, thinking about that, and what those things actually mean. So you're? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm writing aid out to everybody. <laughs> but uh, when we talk about death, too, this is framed so negatively. Um, I've, mm -hmm. I've, you know, hearing, talking about, and that's why the Equal Ability Paper uh, panel was really amazing. If you guys have an opportunity to see online Phyllis' presentation, um, reframing um, disability, reframing, um, I think death is just as important. Um, aging, any of these things that are so shunned by our culture and so you know dismissed, and why I think things like bestiality are really important to look at, um, can be so so powerful in inspiring us to lead nonviolent, happy, generous lives. Um, yeah, what you're saying is making me also think of. Um, Jack Halberstam's work on queer time, yeah, um, yeah. and yeah. how he like there seems to be like a kind of like an unspoken privilege of like longevity here. Um, yeah. That I think you know using like a queer analysis with like an animal studies could be really fruitful. Yeah, yeah, definitely his work um, produced before for that exact reason. Um, oh, so, um, so queer time is sorry um, <laughs> is about. Um, not thinking in terms of uh, like kind of framing the idea of longevity um, as like through like a, a patriarchal lens, so that like you um, a hetero patriarchal lens of looking at like you are a child, you grow up, you marry, you reproduce, your offspring reproduces in like kind of like a linear trajectory, um, and and also like framing kinship through that kind of hetero patriarchal model. Um, and instead, um, one of the examples Halberstam uses is about how, how like during the AIDS crisis, or the early AIDS crisis, um, life um, and the meanings around life and longevity um, and kinship were reframed in like very different ways. Um, and because I think I've been hearing some things about the conference and at um. Monique in my panel yesterday, there was some talk about like, um, and, and similar to, to Jeff's paper at the, the last session, like, about like when would it be okay to kill something or like euthanasia or in the case of our panel yesterday, um, like if chickens have been modified in such a way that their bodies are like not capable of living anymore without pain. Um, because they can't stand, because they're too fat, um, like, like, um, just the way that we think about lives, I think, needs to be checked in terms of like when do we privilege like this, like time in a certain way. Like there's a, like a kind of like a temporality mm -hmm. that I think is like temporality might be able to be like anthropocentrized, um, and that we need to kind of check that. Mm -hmm. Well, even thinking through that, um, the longer our lives are particularly in developed countries which seems like it would be a really amazing thing like i'm i have no urge to die anytime soon um the more resources we use mm -hmm. so if we maintain a particular kind of lifestyle that drains a lot of resources um, is my life more valuable than the people who have less access and then therefore die sooner you know yeah. so yeah there's all sorts of um, class elements related to it too yeah. Just um, occurs to me as you're talking to think about how we're speeding up the lives of animals too. Mm -hmm. It used to take four to six years for a calf to become, you know, to be butchered or what is now mm -hmm. under like 15 years, 14 years, something like that. Yeah. So but by the same token, when the domesticated animals, the non factory farm animals, their lives are extended. So I don't know. It's well, interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's not necessarily like a one-sided critique. I think it's just a way, a, a different mm -hmm. kind of lens to look at, mm -hmm. like look at these problems, these uh, discourses through. Because it feels like the world is spinning faster. Yeah. Right? It feels like things are speeding up. But I think what you say, ironically, in speeding up, that the, the animal life is sort of uh, profit in less expensive. A lot of the the sort of hormones and things that are used to do that are curtailing our lives 